Hey, what's up? I'm Ujemma, and in this video, we're going to take a look at JavaScript's primitive data type, symbol. So symbols are one of JavaScript's six primitive data types that are used to create unique identifiers. So every time you create an instance of a symbol, you're going to get something that's completely unique. There's no way to create duplicates with symbols. So let's take a look at the code for an example. So here I'm creating two symbols, both using the symbol function. So at first glance, it looks like my symbol and another symbol should be equal to one another, but they're actually completely different. So if I try to do a deep equals on them, the value will be false. You can also pass in descriptions when calling the symbol function, but it's important to note that won't change the fact that each symbol that's created is completely unique from one another. So I create another two symbols using the symbol function, but I also pass in the description foo. But let's say that you kind of want to keep track of one instance of a symbol. Like if you provide a description into a symbol function, every time you call for that symbol with that description, you only get that one symbol. So in JavaScript, there's something called a global symbol registry that keeps track of all created symbols on a global level. One function in particular, symbol.4, provides the global symbol associated with the provided description key. So here I have symbol for foo, and if I check to see if symbol for foo is equal to one another, I'll get a true value because there's only one symbol associated with the description foo. But if you try to create another symbol, even with the description foo, and then check it against the global representation for foo, you're gonna get a false value. So now that we covered the how symbols should be used, we should now cover why they are being used. So symbols were initially thought as the solution to private functions in JavaScript. So here I create a secret message symbol and I pass in the description private message and then I create a new class messenger. Then I have my get secret message function which takes in a password. So it's important to note that symbols don't automatically get converted or coerced into strings. So without access to my symbol object, there's no way for me to directly call the secret message function. So I'm going to make an instance of my messenger class and then call the function get secret message. I should get returned back to me the string. The secret message is top secret message. And that's it on symbols. That's all you need to know to get started with using them and incorporating them into your projects. And I recommend that you start using them today. They're super simple, really easy to use. And I think they're a great way for you to further your experience as a software developer. Thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe for more content like this. And with that, I'll see you all in the next one.